Okay, so we are here in the tick component function and we have the if statement for when we are not reversing time and we are storing data in our double linked list. But what about when we are reversing time? Well, we saw that we're checking to make sure we're not out of data and then we can go ahead and reverse time. So first we're going to get the end of the list, the tail end. These are the most recently added uh, nodes to the list. So I'm going to say auto tail and I'm going to say stored frames dot get tail and this will get me the newest frame package node, the newest node that contains a frame package in the list. And we're going to check to see if tail is not null. If that's the case, if it's not null, then I'm going to get the owning, the owning actor, so a actor owner equals get owner. And I'm going to simply set this owner's location and rotation based on the frame package in the tail. So let's say owner set actor location and we're simply going to get the tail. I'm going to call get value that returns us the frame package stored in that node and from that frame package I'm going to get the location vector. Then I'm going to call owner set actor rotation and I'm going to get the tail node. I'm going to get that frame package so get value and rotation. And you might have noticed if you type tail get value, you'll see that there are these other two functions, get next node and get previous node. And this goes to the strength of double linked lists. If you have a node in a linked list and it's a double linked list, it has pointers to the forward and backward adjacent nodes. So just so you know, those functions are there as well. Okay. So now we're going to check to see if the owner has a static mesh component and we're going to do that same uh, do that the same way we did above which is to create a t array of u actor components these are pointers call this components we're going to set that equal to equal to owner get components by class and we're going to have to pass in the class. We're going to use u static mesh component static class. So that gets us the components and spe specifically only the static mesh components. So we're going to say if components dot num greater than zero, then it's not empty. We're going to get a u static mesh component. I'm going to call this SMC. I'm going to cast to u static mesh component. And what we're going to cast is the components indexed at zero, that first static mesh component. Now, if SMC, if this cast is successful, then we're going to call SMC set physics linear velocity. And we're going to simply get the tail, get value, and the linear velocity is what we're going to set. We can also call SMC set physics angular velocity and simply give it the tail, get value, angular velocity, like so. So that sets the value of the actor's location and rotation and its static mesh uh, components, linear and angular velocity, so that's great. Uh, but what about the node? We need to actually um, get that node, right? And so um, if we're going to get that node and remove it from the list, uh, we need to be careful um, to check to see if it's the very last node left. Because if it is the last node, then we know that we're going to be out of data. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're still in the if tail if statement. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say auto head equals stored frames dot get head. We're going to get that head and we're going to check to see if head equals tail. If the head and the tail are the same node, then this is a list with only one node. And so we're about to remove the very last node, which means we're about to be out of data. So this means we can set recorded time to zero. And we can say be out of data equals true. So that's what we'll do if the head and the tail are equal. Now, regardless of whether or not they're equal, uh, we're going to remove this, this node. And so first what we're going to do is say recorded time minus equals. We're going to get the tail and we're going to get the value. And we're going to get delta time. And this is because we are um, subtracting off one of the frame packages and that frame package has its own delta time, so we can take our recorded time and subtract it by that. And then finally, we can take stored frames and remove node, and the node we're going to remove is the tail. Okay, so um, just to recap on this, we if we are um, not, or rather, if if not reversing time is false, then we are reversing time. And we only want to reverse time if we're not out of data. So if we're not out of data, we get the tail node. If that's valid, then we get the owner. And we take the owner and set its location and rotation based on what's stored in that tail node, which uh, contains a frame package. So then we get the components in an array using get components by class for the owner. If it has at least one element, then we get that first element, cast it to a static mesh, store it in SMC. If SMC, then we set that SMC's linear velocity and angular velocity from the data in that frame package. After that, we get the head of the list and see if it's equal to the tail. And if that's the case, then we are removing the very last node. So we're going to set recorded time to zero and set out of data to true. So next frame, if we're still trying to reverse time, we won't go through all this because there won't be anything in the list. Then we actually subtract recorded time by the um, delta time of this node and we set stored frames, uh, we uh, set the, we take the stored frames and we remove the tail node. Okay, so um, the only thing about this is that if, um, if this, if the head is equal to the tail and we set recorded time equal to zero, well then we're going to subtract off of recorded time and it's going to become negative. So what I'd like to do instead is have an else statement here. And so in this else statement, we're going to actually set recorded time here. Um, we're going to subtract it. And um, so if the head is equal to the tail, we'll set it to zero. If it's not equal to the tail, we'll subtract off of it. But either way, we're going to remove this node. And so that way, um, we will we will always remove the node no matter what. Of course, we won't even be in this uh, in this else if statement if we're out of data. So if there are no nodes, we won't even be here. So we won't even try to remove the node when one isn't there. So we can go ahead and go back into the editor, and we have these components, these um, reverse time meshes, and we can go ahead and put them down on the ground and we can create ourselves a nice little pyramid of these. So I'm gonna just go ahead and copy a bunch of them and set them on top of one another, like so. And we can make a little pyramid. So I'm not going to create a whole pyramid that would take too long, but I'm going to go ahead and just um, blow some of these away and then right click and they come 
back to where they started. Okay, so um, it seems like this is working pretty well. Um, so we're going to call this uh, the conclusion to this video. I think that's enough for, uh, for this video. And in the future, in the next video, uh, we're going to start taking a look at some of our assumptions, such as delta time remaining constant. We know that that's not the case. And so um, what we'd like to do is be able to interpolate between frames when we're reversing time. That way we'll have a more smooth, I mean, it, it looks smooth now because the frame rate isn't varying very much. But we would like to be uh, more robust so that we don't have to depend on the frame rate being constant. And then also, if we're interpolating, we can slow things down and reverse in slow-mo and do things like that. So that concludes this video, and we'll see you in the next one.